going further into some of these regulatory issues, now we have Bain Capital crypto partner and head of regulatory and policy, Tuang V. Lee, um, and also uh, a chief counsel at the SEC's Office of Legislative and Intergovernmental Affairs. Uh, hi, V. Welcome to the show. So as you saw, we just talked a little bit about some of these issues with Paxos. I just want to kind of step back for a second and get your take, because I spent a lot of time yesterday trying to figure out what was going on, and I still don't really understand what's going on. So basically, it seems like we have two sort of differing <laughs> versions of the story here, right? First, you have CZ um, on Twitter basically saying, like, we have nothing to do with BUSD other than branding, right? That's kind of his story. Like, he's saying that Binance has nothing to do with BUSD other than branding, um, and it all kind of falls on Paxos, right? And Paxos is also saying that the reserves of BUSD are cupped in banks and, you know, also saying it has nothing to do with finance, right? Yet, if you look at kind of what yeah. Circle, sort of the accusation Circle is making, and you look at a lot of the media reports, it does seem like some people think that the DY, um, the, the DFS is going after Binance specifically. So I'm just trying to understand here what is going on. Like, what is Binance's role in this? Is it because they have sort of the wrapped, you know, BUSD? But if so, are they just basically going after Paxos as a way to get to that, even though Paxos has nothing to do with the wrapped version? So if you could just untangle this, because I don't really understand exactly what's what's going on. Yeah, so, you know, all we have to rely on right now is really the statement or the warning that New York DFS put out yesterday and then also Paxos's own statement. Um, you know, New York DFS was clear that uh, Paxos was authorized to issue BUSD and that that was regulated under New York, D New York DFS's regime. Um, so it's sort of unclear to me that even if the allegations that Circle made about the B token, so the Binance pegged BUSD, which Paxos does not issue, um, and New York DFS does not see oversee. Even if those allegations are true, that you know Binance did not always have um, reserves to fully back the pegged version of BUSD, it's sort of unclear to me why that would matter for uh, the safety or soundness of BUSD which Paxos issues. And New York DFS did not really address that. I wish they would have explained that. Um, I think they did say something about, you know, maybe Paxos didn't do the right sorts of diligence over this partnership that they had with Binance in issuing the BUSD. But still, it's still unclear to me why, if there were issues with the pegged BUSD that Binance controlled, why that would matter to BUSD, which Paxos controlled, yeah. and why that would cause New York That's DFS to, <laughs> to tell Paxos to stop issuing it. So um, I think more details there would have helped. I I just don't know. And it and it's also unclear to me, um, you know, how this relates to the possible action that the SEC might file, right? I mean, first of all, we, we should, you know, acknowledge that the SEC has not decided yet, right, whether they're going to charge Paxos. Um, over uh, BUSD as a security. They're, they they haven't decided yet. The Wells notice is just, to, you know, it's to give Paxos a chance to respond. Um, and sometimes the SEC does change its mind after it receives uh, a Wells submission from, from the party. Um, and that could still happen here. Uh, and so we don't know. But um, And we also don't know whether they're also looking into Binance's actions and Binance's pegged BUSD um, and how that, again, would relate to Paxos's issuance of BUSD. Um, so there's still a lot of questions, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's exactly my question, because it doesn't really make sense. I mean, the only kind of way this would make sense is that, again, if the DFS wants to go after wrapped BUSD, their only path is through Paxos because they don't really have access to regulate Binance. That's basically one explanation. I guess the question is, though, as far as we know, because there are some confusing reports out there, nobody is actually accusing um, Pax, uh, like Binance of being involved with BUSD specifically, it's all about the wrapped version, or are there also kind of this sense that, may, sense that maybe um, the DFS believes that Binance is messing with BUSD itself as opposed to the wrapped version? So I, th I think you would need to know more details about that partnership um, and, you know, whether, uh, what impact 
the pegged version of BUSD, which is controlled by Binance, whether, you know, things that are going on there would potentially have an impact on BUSD or whether Paxos is involved at all in what happens with the pegged version of BUSD controlled by Binance. We just don't know at this point. Um, but I, you know, if New York DFS is telling Paxos, you have to stop issuing BUSD because we have concerns potentially about what's happening with the pegged version, then potentially there is some like more involvement or maybe entanglement there than, than we know. Um, but we yeah, would need it, more it, details, I think. It's not obvious. It seems, reg it seems though that regulators are concerned with, with one ongoing theme in all of this, and that is from UST to FTX's token to whatever, is that you have the value of an asset far larger than the reserves. You have some sort of mismatch between what was counted as assets versus what's counted as liabilities. And that this is another example that they seem to be uh, concerned about at the very least and on some level. Mm -hmm. uh, what would this mean if they do, you know, if they ultimately do fine or, or uh, stop the pegged USD, uh, the peg Binance USD uh, from from uh, being in existence, or I mean, as much as they can, given that it's out of the U.S. But how? What does it mean for other stable coins that may not have the backing that uh, they claim they do? I don't know. There might be a couple of really big ones out mm -hmm. there. Who knows? Uh, that don't have the assets that they say they do. Um, do you think that it ultimately has a long-term negative effect on trading and liquidity in the in the crypto markets? Yeah, I mean, trust is really important here, right? There, there are stablecoin issuers like Paxos and like Circle who are regulated by state regulators like New York DFS. And there they do have to be backed one by one. They do have to show proof that they have the reserves that they claim, right? So it's not that these... Uh, a lot of these stable coins are totally unregulated. Um, but, you know, I, I do think that this is a reason there have uh, been calls for some sort of regime at the federal level, for instance, right? Congress proposed multiple bills last year that would um, regulate these stable coin issuers in a way where you could prove and, and customers could show, could see that these stable coins, stable coins were fully backed. Now, these are just talking about you know, centralized custodial stable coins, things like USDC, things like Paxos USD. Obviously, there are other types of stable coins out there, um, like the decentralized uh, algorithmic stable coins, like Makers Die and things like that. Um, and, you know, those present different, I think, questions from a regulatory perspective. But the question of custody and the question of collateral and fully backed reserves and all of that, I mean, I think those are exactly the kinds of things that policymakers are thinking about um, uh, because they do raise questions about the safety of, of these customer assets. I also noticed um, more recently you tweeted about the thing about crypto is that you can't apply the securities laws in a technology neutral way by viewing crypto assets like stable coins or services like staking solely through a securities lens. You're inherently threatening the technology and in some cases, killing it. Uh, and this is a different tweet uh, you mentioned about um, self-staking, uh, conflating self-staking with staking as a service. But on the the uh, former tweet, I just want to ask you, you know, what you mean by that? And if, uh, if that's the case, what's the solution? Yeah, I mean, I think this is sort of the frustration that a lot of us in the industry have is that because the SEC has been, you know, pursuing the regulation of crypto almost entirely through enforcement actions, like the one against Kraken last week, um, like potentially the one that they may bring against Paxos, um, you know, it, it, it leaves a lot of questions, right, about, well, for instance, what form of a staking service would be acceptable to the SEC? We don't necessarily know just from a single enforcement action or even through multiple enforcement actions, right? Like um, in the, the application of something like Howey and the securities laws generally are very facts and circumstances specific, specific. So any single action like the one against Kraken is, it can be limited in terms of like what we can learn from it and what it means for other staking service providers. Um, so, you know, I guess what I'm saying is when the SEC tells us that something is not compliant, it's not necessarily the same thing as telling us what they would consider compliant, right? So 
um, you know, it, just to look at staking as an example, and this is sort of the kind of thing that I was alluding to in my tweet, right? It's, it's you know, if you're going to offer staking as a service and you want it to be compliant, it's actually not as simple as going onto the SEC's website and filling out a form and then voila, you're good to go. Um, applying the federal securities laws to something like staking services, where a provider takes your crypto and does things with it, that actually raises really novel and complex questions around custody, right? So for instance, if you're taking custody, does that make you a broker dealer or an investment advisor? And if so, can you comply with rules that apply to broker dealers under the existing securities laws, like the customer protection rule, right? That rule says that you know, uh, you're not allowed to transact with customer assets if you're taking custody as a broker dealer. Um, so wouldn't something like that per se forbid staking? If you're a crypto provider like Kraken, like Coinbase, you know, all of these crypto platforms that take custody of customer assets, if you're applying the securities laws like the broker, you know, and saying that they're a broker dealer, they per se can't do anything with the assets that they take custody of, right? So that I would would forbid something like staking. Um, and that's what I mean in, you know, when I said that just blindly and mechanically applying the existing securities laws without thinking about, you know, the different and unique questions that digital assets and that blockchain technology raise that are different than traditional securities could potentially just kill a, something like staking. Okay, but so that's no, what I nonetheless, mean I mean, it it, it, it seems at least when, the way the SEC was looking at it is almost in the form of a swap, right? It was essentially that you had a variable rate return that was being swapped for a fixed rate return, right? Which is what that APY that they were offering their customers. So effectively, it was, it, it seems fairly cut and dry from, from the point of view of the security of the of the regulators that this was a form of security because it was essentially a swap. So, I mean, isn't it, it, it almost sounds like the real issue is that maybe the the uh, crypto markets aren't well versed in how the SEC would look at what the the products that they're offering is that also could that also be part of the problem is not so much as it's difficult for them to know how to register it so much as they don't realize that what they're actually doing is making a security out of what they're offering yeah i mean i i think you know you you do have to like i was saying earlier right it's it, these enforcement actions are very specific to the facts and circumstances um of each situation um you know i think staking some staking service programs differ from the one that kraken was offering um where you know if you're applying howie which is what the sec did with kraken uh kraken staking service you, you would have to look at, I think, the efforts of others prong. And there are facts there that could make it so that, you know, the, the efforts that this crypto provider is expending on behalf of the customers are not what they call managerial or entrepreneurial in nature. Rather, they're more ministerial, like just purely technical um services like providing the computers to run the validator nodes 24 7 and doing things to prevent like double signing and things like that right so i think it does turn on the specific facts um, of the staking program it sounds like based on kraken uh, based on the kraken complaint that the sec felt like kraken's efforts went well beyond that um you know they did things to smooth the yield in order to guarantee certain um, APYs to their customers, as opposed to, for instance, um, just passing on the true network rewards, staking rewards. Um, and so, you know, I think the SEC saw those kinds of efforts as sort of going beyond simply a technical like service provider mm -hmm. or something like that. So I think it depends, right? Other staking programs, I think, are more like the former, where they are just kind of passing on the true network staking rewards and then taking a fee on top of that. It doesn't sound like that's what Kraken was doing. And, and those kinds of facts made a difference to the Howie analysis, I think.